Now one thing I want to talk about today is a lifting off technique. Now there's many ways of taking the paint off the paper I know and um, I tend to use my double zero brush which is this one here um, to take most of the details off. So when you look at this particular robin here you see I've taken all these little tiny details off by lifting the paint off and then dabbing it with some tissue. So what I'll do, I'll just kind of give a quick demonstration it's only a very short video on how I do that. The brush I tend to use a lot for either doing just a general detail work and also for the uh, lifting off technique, a lot of the time, as I say, is this particular one. This is um, a Winsor & Newton Cotsman Series 111. Uh, it's a double zero in size. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll put the link down below. And if you do buy anything from that link, I get a little small commission from, from the sale. But it doesn't cost you anything extra, so don't worry. That's not a problem. Um, so I'll put it down below, and that goes for anything else which I've got here, like the paints which I use as well. Now, bear in mind as well that some of the colours which you use, when I have a look at my palette here, for example, some of the colours which you tend to use can stain the paper. Some of the browns can stain, some blues can stain. So it's best to kind of test them out if you can on some scrap paper first. I mean, I've got plenty of little bits of scrap paper, like little tiny pieces like this down to very large, but what does that say? I've got no idea. Anyway, <laughs> uh, to give us some ideas. But that's what I've done to set, to set the detail out of the robin. So if I zoom in on this, I'll give you some idea on how I would lift the paint off and uh, give a slight demonstration how that's done. When I lift paint off, what I'll normally use is a piece of tissue, so a bit of a kitchen roll, because I've been using this quite a lot for lifting paint off. So when you look at the robin on the robin's chest here, the, all the orangey reddy colours, that's what these little marks are. So when I wet the paper, I dab it with my tissue and that pulls the paint off. So I'll just demonstrate on this piece of kind of test paper for you, just to give you some ideas. I do a small mark here. Well, I'll make it a little bit bigger actually so you can just see it. Keep going over the same area time and time again with a damp, clean brush. Don't have it too soaking wet, otherwise you'll end up pulling too much paint off in one go. And you see the mark I've already made there. So I'll do the same again, but I'll go much finer this time. So bear with me, time and time again, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, and then lift off the paint, okay? So you can get some really tiny fine marks. Make sure you wash your brush out in between though, because if you don't, all you're doing is transferring the paint from one area to another. So keep washing that brush out, because this is nearly finished, just got the branch to paint now, which I'm going to take off, and that's this little part down here. So what I'll do, I'll just zoom into that a little bit more for you, so you can see what I mean. Bear with me a minute. Okay, now the brush is going to be slightly damp, so I'm going to make sure, so if I wet the brush fully, look, I'm going to make sure that a lot of the water is off the brush before I start. And I'm going to go over this little branch area here, a bit more water, wipe it off. Very lightly tickle the paint and then dab it with some tissue, so that's getting lighter already. If you don't get it all off, what you can do, you can pretend and put something else there if you want to, put a little leaf in there, or anything really, anything just to kind of make it up a little bit more, so something doesn't go quite according to plan, so we don't have mistakes. As Bob Ross used to say we have happy accidents, don't we? But just to kind of repair one little area, and that's how I would normally do it, using a stiffer brush. Now, one thing you have to be careful of as well, it depends on the quality of the paper. If you've got half decent quality paper, this is Bockingford, £140. I'll put the link for that down below as well for you, so you can see which one it is. And um, it's the one that I tend to use, it's a not surface, in other words it's not hot press, it's not gone through hot rollers when it's made. So therefore it's got a little bit of a texture to it, it's not rough, but it's got a small texture to it, and that's what I prefer to use. But some papers you'll find tend to stain easier than others and some papers will not withstand rough work by trying to take all the paint off. So bear that in mind, always, always, always test on some scrap paper first. Click on like, share and uh, subscribe and I'll talk to you all again very soon. Bye bye for now. Hi there, well thank you for watching one of my little videos and if you want to see anything else I've got more on here as well but also if you have a look at my Patreon channel just there look, okay that's the one, yeah, got it? Um, I'm showing people how to paint step by step and using watercolour. So this is using um, all the finest of details for wildlife in general. So if you want to learn how to paint wildlife in watercolour, then come along and join me on Patreon. Bye bye for now.